Welcome to Healthcare Demands Better Patient Identification, an exploration of IBM InfoSphere MDM and how it can be used to work with active registration and an explanation of the Olmsted Medical Center story. My name is Tyson Carter. I'm the manager of client education here at IMT, and it's my pleasure to be your host today. I have with us four panelists that we'll be walking through this discussion for the next hour or so, all right? With that, I'd like to introduce today's panelists. First, we have Jim Daphnis. Jim is the Director of Account Management here at IMT. He's been a part of the IMT family for over 20 years. He's been working with a large number of different clients across a variety of industry segments. And his experience really spans from software development and technical consulting to serving as a solution architect and overseeing IMT's professional services. In Jim's current role, it allows him to use his technical skills and business experience to build lasting relationships with our clients. Also with us today is uh, Lorraine Fernandes. Lorraine Fernandes is the principal and founder of Fernandes Healthcare Insights. Previously, you may have known her as the Global Healthcare Ambassador for IBM Analytics, where she specialized in information integration and governance. Lorraine's an international and domestic thought leader, accomplished author, and respected public speaker on topics related to the technology's role in the healthcare transformation. Lorraine is on the Board of Directors for the International Federation of Health Information Management Associations, and she serves as the Regional Director for the Americas. Lorraine's also received multiple awards for her leadership in healthcare strategy. Most notably, she received the 2013 Pioneer Award from the American Health Information Management Association, or AHIMA. Next. Our main panelist today is the lovely Michelle Majeris. She's the Health Information Management Director and Information Privacy Officer uh, at Olmsted Medical Center. There, Michelle is responsible for the oversight and administration of health information management, information privacy, and the Institutional Review Board and grant management. Olmsted Medical Center is a not-for-profit integrated multi-specialty healthcare delivery system. Earlier in her career at Olmsted, she joined in 1996. She worked as a laboratory and x-ray technician and as an ambulatory and acute care nurse. She's a Southeastern Minnesota native, and Michelle studied her undergrad nursing and pre-med at St. Mary's School of Practical Nursing, Rochester Community and Technical College, and Winona State. In 2002, she transferred into health information technology, completing a Bachelor of Science in Technology and Information Management prior to obtaining her Master's of Business Administration in 2014, both from Upper Iowa University. Our final panelist today is Corrine Blair. She's an IMT industry, analyst, or industry consultant with over 28 years of experience in information technology. 26 of those in healthcare IT, specifically in Canada. For the last 13 years, uh, Kareen has been highly focused on implementations of MDM solutions, working closely with health information management teams to deploy their identity management solutions and improve business value. Now that we've met our panelists, let's take a quick look at an overview of today's agenda. We'll begin with a brief introduction from Jim on IMT and a little bit about our Resolve ID solution. From there, Lorraine will chip, will chip in and join us to discuss healthcare demands for better patient identification. After that, Michelle will join us to deliver the Olmsted story to discuss how active registration has been transformative for the Olmsted team. From there, uh, Corrine will join us for a demonstration of Resolve ID so you can see what the technology that's in use at Olmsted looks like. And we'll wrap things up with questions and introducing some additional webinars that are coming up in the next few months. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass things over to Jim where he can uh, get started and tell you a little bit more about the IMT team. 
Thank you, Tyson. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you will find today's session in informative and useful. So I'm going to start by describing what IMT does and who we are for those that might not be as familiar and where we are in our current uh, growth and maturity. And then I'm going to introduce a product IMT has developed called Resolve ID, which is the underlying technology related to the theme we're talking about today. So our motto at IMT and what we strive to be is identity solutions experts. We have a focused niche of building solutions that solve identity challenges, specifically related to critical business identities. We help our clients discover the connections between their data by leveraging innovative and industry-leading technologies and methodologies. We're a small, agile team, and we stay on top of current trends in identity-related issues and innovations. In terms of solutions, we solve identity challenges our clients face across, across several industries. We primarily support healthcare providers and payers, life sciences, telecommunications, and government clients. We deliver solutions that leverage the power of having a 360-degree view of your patients, providers, members, citizens, or customers. And IMT has been recognized as a global leader in enterprise master patient index solutions and extensions. We've proven our value with over 100 referenceable projects where we focus on creating end-to-end -end solutions that maximize the return on your investment. And we're committed to R&D where we leverage what we learn to further innovate for our clients and the industry at large. To give you some history and background on IMT, in 1991 we were formed by a group of scientists from the Canadian National Research Council in Winnipeg, Manitoba. We are incorporated in the U.S. and Canada. We have a team of 35 talented individuals located in our offices in Winnipeg and Chicago. And we also have people in New York, Toronto, Des Moines, Calgary and Edmonton. We have a partnership with IBM that carried over from the Initiate acquisition. We are a premier class IBM business partner in the information integration and governance space. We hold IBM industry certifications in healthcare and life sciences and capability certification in master data management. All Scripts is another one of our partners and we work with them to provide identity solutions that enable population health and healthcare analytics use cases. We have also partnered with a company called Forecare. They're a Dutch company that leads the industry in creating IHE compliant cross enterprise document sharing platforms and solutions. And we are actively involved in research with the Canadian National Research Council IRAP program and we support our community through outreach and fundraising for the St. Amant Center for Autism and De Developmental Disabilities in Winnipeg. Now a bit about Resolve ID. Resolve ID is a product developed by IMT that builds on a client's existing investment in IBM Infosphere MDM Patient Hub. Active registration is one of the forms of integration that Resolve ID can enable. And to briefly define active registration, it is the process of searching the EMPI for, for a patient from within your point of service system, usually a registration system, to see if they are known to the larger enterprise, even if they have never visited that location. With Resolve ID, registrars continue to use the same tools they already know with minimal change to the existing workflow. 
By working with clients to develop active registration solutions, we saw a need that was un left unfulfilled. And that's where we, de re we developed Resolve ID. And Resolve ID fills that need by making active registration possible for a wider range of systems out there. Olmsted Medical Center uses Resolve ID and has realized a number of benefits that you will hear about today. We've worked with several vendors to make Resolve ID compatible with their products. And I just want to point out IMT offers a free proof of connectivity test for any system not listed here on this slide. And we've also made Resolve ID work with biometric identification systems such as palm vein, palm vein scanners. So Resolve ID leverages MDM's probabilistic searching that accounts for nicknames and alternate spellings, casts a wider search across the enterprise to reduce duplicates and error-prone retyping of information. The goal here is to reduce the workload of data stewards, reduce the strain on HIM resources, and speed up the patient registration process. When tailoring Resolve ID to your environment, your data governance standards and best practices can be leveraged as part of the workflow, preventing many potential data quality issues before they occur. And before I wrap up, I just want to make a note that beyond Resolve ID, IMT has also enabled active registration using other available methods and standards. This gives our clients a range of options to best integrate into their current ecosystem. Thank you very much, and with that, now over to Lorraine Fernandes to hear the latest trends in healthcare patient identification. Thanks much, Jim, and welcome to everybody who's on the line with us today. So we're going to switch gears a little bit as our slide shows here. We're going to talk for just a moment about why the demand is so high for accurate, real-time, upfront, whatever buzzword you want to use, patient identification. So what I'm sharing with you is something I believe everyone on this line probably lives and breathes almost every day is the rapid digitalization of the healthcare community. And it really doesn't matter what country you're in around the globe, you're faced with moving paper to electronic, dealing with all different types of data, dealing with new regulation, what probably seems like every month or every quarter, a lot more engagement with your consumers out there, your patients, your members, your citizens, and then at the same time trying to deal with the shortage of skilled resources. And I think this particular disruptive force really rings true with what we're talking about today, because when you do accurate real-time patient identification, you make better use of your skilled resources that are becoming harder and harder to recruit, to train, and to retain. So it's engaging that consumer to move from, from a pay, paid uh, fee-for-service environment to a wellness environment discovering the information, and then deciding what you really can do in using that information to improve the health and wellness of the citizens, patients, members that you're serving. And as the next slide shows you, this is not an easy task, as you well know, because of the intensive data growth that's going on around the world in literally every industry. I sit here today with my uh, personal device tracking my steps and my flights of stairs and everything. That's just one example of the data growth that's going on in healthcare and the wellness community and all the other industries that are out there. And it's a challenge to particularly create information out of this data, whether it's data that's coming from devices in your four walls of an organization, it's data the patient is giving you, it's data that's exchanged from one site to another, because otherwise, as my friends from China would say, that data is just dead data. So we've got to make sure we create 
life out of that data. And I think the life out of the data is really creating information by understanding who Lorraine Fernandez is across my continuum of care as, as I try to improve my health and wellness. And the demands that are placed on me as well as the organizations. So speaking of demands, we talk about healthcare demanding better patient identification amidst this data explosion. And so what I've given you here on this slide is just a few examples of activities that are going on in organizations. Again, not unique to any country as they try to really push healthcare transformation, push innovation, you know, bend that cost curve, achieve the triple aim. But we have to do it not just on a retrospective basis, but on a prospective or a real-time basis also. And that's where I think the conversation today comes into place, particularly with Michelle's example of why they deployed active integration, active registration, to get that patient ID right at the point of that patient engagement so that you can, in fact, validate information, make the right choice for who Lorraine Fernandez is despite the variability in my data, and then have that accurate data that serves the lifetime of the patient and the lifetime of the data. So shifting gears just a little to go beyond perhaps the clinical impact or the research impact, talk just a moment about payment, because payment affects all of us, whether it's the co-pays we have to pay if you're in a high deductible HSA plan in the US or other forms of payment that we all make for healthcare, we want to get more value out of the dollars that we spend. And again, this is virtually every country in the world in some fashion is trying to shift to a value-based payment, whether it's incentivizing the physicians and the hospitals, whether it's incentivizing the executives in a healthcare system so they set the right goals and objectives. Perhaps it's done at the provincial level, perhaps it's done at the care delivery level. But all of these incentives, in my opinion, are going to be based upon a very solid understanding, again, choosing myself, who is Lorraine Fernandez across my continuum of care? And despite the variability of my data, and a lot of that variability is very accurate. It's not fraud, it's not people gaming the system, it's legitimate shifting of my data. But I need to be able to coordinate my care, I need to be able to coordinate my payment to make sure that I'm getting value and that the incentives that are in place for physicians and providers, in fact, are using the right data, the trusted data, in order to reward those who are, in fact, bending that cost curve and really doing their best to achieve the triple aim. And when you talk about the data, as the next slide shows you, I think I applaud ONC, the Office of National Coordinator, out of HHS in the US, because as you see here, they published metrics with years attached to them of where patient identification, the accuracy of what should be that unique medical record number in an organization should be. And you might say, well, wait a minute, this is just ONC, and we all know it's an election year in the US, and what a wild year it is that we can say. So why should I care, perhaps, about ONC publishing something like this? I think history proves that when ONC or any group like ONC publishes metrics like this, while you think they may not have teeth, they actually do because other segments of the healthcare market will adopt this. The payers might adopt this. Other standards organizations might adopt this. And the quality metrics might adopt this in that value-based payment that we just talked about for a minute. So don't ignore these. Uh, I use them a lot as a metric to really help guide people and to motivate people and to build a plan and a vision of where you want to be. 
And in fact, uh, I'll right now applaud Michelle and Olmsted because they're already, with the plan they put in place and executed, meeting the 2024 standard of less than one-tenth of one percent for their error rate. And she'll talk about how they've achieved this. So the last slide I'll share with you is a journey or a roadmap. And I've used this particular example a couple of times in working with clients to help build the vision, to build accountability, and clearly this is very high level, but it's to help articulate the demand, some key steps, some components of that plan, and I think it really can help the multi-stakeholder group that you're going to convene build trust in data so that despite the variability in data across that healthcare continuum, you can really build trusted data on that real-time proactive basis so that when Lorraine Fernandez is at the point of access, point of care registration death, desk, we actually are capturing her data correctly so it stays with all of my other data that links to that to feed that research, to re feed value-based payments, to ensure there's no fraud happening with the patient identity, and to really help organizations achieve that triple aim and, in fact, engage that consumer in their care with confidence. So I hope these few vision steps will help you in your organizations as you champion better patient identification data to meet the higher demands of the industry. So with that, I will pass things over to Michelle to share her story, and I think you'll. Thank you, Lorraine. Tyson, will you please advance? There we go, thank you. Olmsted Medical, uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Olmsted Medical Center is located in southeastern Minnesota. Uh, key statistics are available here for your viewing. Our mission is delivery of exceptional patient care, focusing on caring, quality, safety, and service. We leverage the IBM Initiate MDM Patient Hub in tandem with Resolve ID to help realize this mission. This solution allows for simplistic, seamless access to enterprise master person information for over 300,000 patient visits annually and without it, delivering our mission would be more difficult. Our information technology environment is comprised of two registration systems and two EHR systems. Today, we leverage active integration with our ambulatory registration system, McKesson. We do not have active integration in place with our hospital registration system, Cerner. The reason for this is because our hospital environment resides in a multi-tenant domain. Cerner is currently unable to specifically isolate this environment for use with Resolve ID. I've also included on the slide our downstream ancillary systems uh, for radiology and laboratory information, as well as our data warehouses, which we use for housing financial information such as claims data, performing clinical analytics, and performing population health for patient impanelment and calculation of cost sharing. OMC's data environment has 15 to 20 different patient identifiers. We also have multiple reporting databases and data marts as shown on the previous slide, and we have multiple patient match algorithms. All of this adds to the complexity of uniquely identifying each patient. Historical changes have presented um, some opportunities for OMC. We've had inefficient manual patient search processes in disparate systems. We've had patient matching difficulties across systems where automated data flows were inefficient and patients were often mismatched due to the multitude of patient identifiers available for each patient. Some of these identifiers included the traditional chart IDs from each paper record location, by location. Uh, we had x-ray jacket numbers. We had a specific number for a patient in our lab information system and our radiology system. We had 
our primary registration numbers, uh, both in the ambulatory and in the hospital. We also identified patients by social security numbers, and that, that number of uh, patient matches just became more and more difficult. Also, our disparate systems had their own unique MPI, which was often behind the scenes and not searchable through the application. We had other historical challenges related to patient safety and treatment delays. Uh, sometimes we had misdiagnoses, we had delay in actually administering treatment, we had delays in communicating critical results, and we found that patient identification or misidentification really did impact the clinical outcomes for our patients. We also had fragmented population health data. So as we began with population health, it was challenging to truly identify patient panels, especially specific populations considered as critical for management. We also have some emerging new challenges, uh, such as identity theft red flag and replacing legacy systems. OMC has an identity theft prevention program to detect, prevent, and mitigate identity theft in connection with the opening of new patient accounts or even updating certain existing patient accounts. Because of the simplistic, seamless access to enterprise master person information contained within our IBM Initiate MDM patient hub, OMC is able to manage that. We can put patient demographic information in the hands of frontline registration personnel, which provides them with easy searching, comparing, and automatic entry of demographic information into our existing ambulatory registration system. In relation to replacing of legacy systems, we are in the preparation phase for replacing many of our legacy systems. This will potentially include not only one, but both of our registration systems, as well as potentially both of our EHR environments. And for anybody who has gone through the replacement of a, a system like that, uh, you may have already experienced the challenges of ensuring that data that's going to be populated into a new system is as accurate as possible. The IBM Initiate MDM Patient Hub is going to be instrumental in preparing us to backload high-quality demographic data into our new systems. In late 2012, IBM became OMC's preferred software vendor for our enterprise master person index solution. We selected IMT, an IBM business partner, as our partner of choice for technical and implementation services. The scope of the project included the implementation of the patient hub to serve as a core component for our EMPI solution. The implementation included several phases, the last of implement the last being the implementation of Resolve ID, which provides access to EMPI stored in the IBM Initiate MDM patient hub by again extending an existing health information system with functions for searching, comparing, and automatic data entry into our existing ambulatory registration system. Our baseline data was obtained in 2012, and the data for duplicates were manually identified, often by clinical staff. On average, we were spending approximately 10 hours per week managing 130 duplicates. And again, these duplicates were often identified when a patient presented and a nurse or a physician would call the HIM department and say, this patient is in the EHR twice and um, then we would work the duplicate. So it was very reactive rather than being proactive. This measurement uh, that you're seeing displayed now uh, shows from April of 2014 when we went live with our EMPI and our passive registration all the way up to our most current uh, data collected in June of this year. And this time period for these measurements is a one-week time period. The EMPI and passive integration initially identified many data quality issues, duplicates and overlays that had previously gone undetected due to our manual processes that were in place. To date, we have reduced our data quality issues by approximately 77%. Our remaining data quality issues and duplicates are specifically related to our hospital environment. 
which as I shared earlier, does not leverage active integration due to vendor constraints specific to our multi-tenant domain environment. The results, the results are in and they speak volumes. Patient safety, due to our reduction in duplicates, we have reduced the potential for misdiagnoses, the potential for incorrect care or treatment, uh, the, we've reduced the potential for delays in care or diagnoses, also uh, reduced the potential for delays in communicating critical results, and we've increased our patient correlation rates with our health information exchange. We also, in relation to patient satisfaction and engagement, have reduced our registration time uh, for our frontline staff, we've reduced our duplicate billing, and we have increased the utilization of our patient portal. Our staff efficiencies are, are noted here as well. We've had a reduction in staff confusion. Often we had staff that were confused with uh, which demographic information was the most current because of our two disparate systems. Again, uh, our staff are more efficient uh, with the registration process, and we've increased our staff competency. Not only uh, has the EMPI uh, helped identify our patients, uh, it also gave us an opportunity to create and enforce uh, patient or policies specific to patient identification and identification integrity. As shared earlier, we also uh, use our EMPI to leverage and mitigate identity theft prevention and uh, red flag rule. Again, it was designed to detect, prevent, and mitigate identity theft. We do experience, like many other organizations, that a patient can present with inconsistent information and we leverage our EMPI as the source of truth for the information that we have on file for that patient. And last but not least, we feel very confident that we have very clean data for our new systems that we will be leveraging uh, data housed in our EMPI to populate any new systems going forward. And now I'm going to turn this over to Corinne, who will take you through a demonstration. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Michelle, and welcome, everybody, and thanks for taking the time to join us today. Before we jump into the demo, I wanted to highlight some key features of Resolve ID. As Jim mentioned earlier, Resolve ID can seamlessly integrate into your registration system so you can search for the most current demographics and resolve the identity of a patient in real time, all of which enhances the registration process. We call this today active integration, where you resolve the identity of a patient before you update or create a new patient. As Michelle mentioned, Resolve ID has proven to reduce patient duplication and demographic errors by leveraging the MDM, probabilistic search capabilities, and matching algorithms. With the ability to register new patients using data from the EMPI, this has again provided better data quality, increased accuracy, and time savings by not needing to rekey information into the system. There are a few, uh, there's a few key things that I'm going to show you in the demo. Um, what you'll see is you'll see external searching of the enterprise EMPI to, tain, to obtain the most current demographics to be used by the registration process. I'm going to highlight the in, utilization of the MDM robust search algorithm to find and resolve a person's identity so that duplicate records are not created. We're going to leverage the MPI for the most current demographics for the registration of a brand new patient. And finally, you'll see the cost savings, uh, the time savings of the keystrokes for the registrar. Data is scripted automatically. So Tyson, if you can um, let me share my desktop. Wonderful, thank you. So the screen I'm showing you right now is a representation of a local registration system. Um, search screen, and the workflow that I'm going to take you through is really based on a common patient resolution process. I'm going to demonstrate for you two scenarios today, but for the first scenario, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a search for a person that already exists in the local registration system, and then update their record with the most current uh, enterprise values from the EMPI. So I'm going to use a patient called Debbie Johnson. As you know, it's not correct. I put Debbie in the last name and Johnson in the first name. So I've actually transposed the first and last name. I'm going to first search locally for Debbie Johnson. 
Resolve ID searched the local system and found that no records existed for that patient. This is because the local search uses traditional searching methods such as exact or correct name spelling, proper name places, placement, so you have to put the first and the last name in the right, in the right places. And, I've also, and, and of course, I've transposed the first and last, last name field. So with no patients returned, the register would create a brand new patient record given no data was returned. As an outcome, the registrar would again ask the patient for all of their information again and create that duplicate record. Now by clicking the MPI search button, Resolve ID will search the enterprise EMPI and return back the results. In this search, the EMPI probabilistic um, matching search features were invoked, which allowed for field transposition and, as, and, and certainly nicknames, as you've seen, I typed in Debbie and it brought back Deborah and nicknames. The results returned the most probable match for the search criteria of Debbie Johnson. This probable match is called an EMPI entity record, meaning it's a representation of the most current demographic record for the search criteria of Debbie Johnson. As you can see, on the right-hand side, the, the results returned a score. Right here. The higher the score is, the higher is the more likely it's the correct patient. On the left side, you'll see a patient ID field. This also has a value, which means there is actually a local record from the, from the registration system, even though we initially couldn't find the patient on the local search. When you see the results record without a patient ID, something in this field, it means it came from another source system within the MPI. Next, I'm going to actually select the, select the Members tab. From this screen, we can actually drill down to see all of the records that are linked from all other source systems within the enterprise. So these, actually these three records represent Debbie Johnston, um, but all from different sources. These records are called EMPI member records, which come from different sources, as I mentioned. And all of these records represent the same patient as Debbie Johnston. Note there is a, a Debbie Johnston record with a local source record of 3535. And note the differences in spelling from the other sources across the system, as I mentioned. Uh, the algorithm helps determine nicknames, um, aliases, et cetera, and links the, the patient together. I'm now I'm going to close this member screen. And now I'm back to the results screen and the EMPI entity view. I'm going to select Debbie Johnson's record. Note that Resolve ID automatically grabbed and applied the correct local patient record for the registration. Even though we were looking at a local record for Debbie Johnston, there could be more recent data from other MDM sources. So now we can look at the most recent MPI data and compare to the local patient record by simply hitting a configurable key. And for this, uh, for this demo, uh, we've configured um, F5. At this point, the registrar would say to Debbie, uh, what, what do you prefer to be called, Debbie or Deborah? And of course, she chooses Deborah. All of the other information can be confirmed with a patient right in front of you. Is this the correct address? Is this the correct phone number? Is the cell correct? When I click Apply, Resolve ID automatically enters the most current demographic information selected from that select screen, that previous screen, into the screen in the right places, no typing, um, no typos. Huge time savings. So that was scenario one. In scenario two, let's find somebody that's not in the local registration system and enter them into the local system quickly and easily. So I'm going to search for a new fella, and his name is Robert Potter. But I'll do it right this time. And I'm going to actually search locally to make sure he doesn't exist. As you can see, Robert Potter cannot be found in the local system as he's never been registered in that registration system. And I was very careful to make sure that I used exact and correct spelling. Now I'm going to actually search the enterprise EMPI. Same criteria. The EMPI returned three candidates and note the difference in the scores here on the right-hand side. The score is indicating more or less similar to the search criteria that I provided that was entered. Now I'm going to click the Enhance Search button. 
and I'm going to enter more criteria in the phone number field. Now that I've added more criteria, Resolve Ideas improved the accuracy and reduced the number of return results. Just like Google, when you add more data, it narrows down the search to give you a much more refined search. Also note, with the addition of the phone number, the score is now higher. So previously it was 53, and now it's 96. And the addition of the phone number reduced the score on the, the bottom record that was previously returned, and it actually had a phone number of 999, which is an anonymous value. So now it's not showing up at all. Everything you see here, the order of the columns, uh, the fields that are being displayed are completely configurable. So you have choices there. I'm going to now select um, the More Details tab just in case I wanted to see more demographic information from the EMPI that was not actually on the results screen. And again, this is completely configurable. So yes, I, I can confirm a few more things with the client in front of me. Um, that was perhaps not in the returns candidate. Now I'm going to select the very first Robert Potter and note on the left hand side here that the, the patient ID field is blank, meaning yeah, he does not have a record in the local registration system. <clears throat> the EMPI has indicated that there's no local patient ex existed for the EMPI um, and no matches. So which good is it's done another search. Yeah, the MPI um, performed that other local search. Robert Potter is really a new person for this registration system, and so I'm going to add him. When I clicked on the Add button, a blank demographic form pops up. Since we really know all about Robert already because we've already seen him, hitting another function key, which is F6 for this presentation, Resolve ID will automatically, and you can see how quickly that was, um, Type in all the data for us. Again, no typos, no manual creation. It actually, all that information came in from the EMPI and all that information for us. <clears throat> and from here, the registration workflow of the new patient would continue. So once you've selected the patient, you would continue and add additional information about the patient, insurance information, et cetera. So that's actually it for the demo, and um, thank you um, for your attention. I'm going to pass this back to Tyson. So Tyson. If you have follow-up questions that you would like to send in to our panelists, feel free to email us um, at events at imt.ca. I'd also like to mention that we have two more upcoming webinars that we're going to have later this year. On November 2nd, we're going to discuss upgrading your MDM platform and a discussion of how we can not only look at upgrade paths for you for MDM, but also how you can optimize, enhance, and leverage new capabilities that would extend your MDM solutions. Further, we will also have a December webinar on mastering patient consent and discussing the key challenges and opportunities for managing and auditing consent at an enterprise level. So with that, thank you everyone so much for joining us today. Thank you to our panelists for all of your insights on active registration and how it can help with the imperative for having better patient identification and we wish you all the best. Thank you.